All right, so we've got a live demo about to start here at the Kumo Theater, if you'd like to come in and join us. And Kieran, tell us what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so we're going to be going over the media, AWS Elemental Media Live Service and the AWS Elemental Media Package Service. So quickly going over how to create an input, set up a live stream, send that to a packager so it's formatted for a device that it needs to go on, and then actually showing playback from a device of a stream that's already set up and how quickly it can be done. All right, so there's a little risk involved with the live demo, yes? Huh? Hopefully not. Uh, but yeah, at the, at the end, hopefully, I'll be showing everyone a live stream playing on my phone that we've set up very quickly here. All right, very good. Please welcome to the stage, Kieran Patel. Thank you. So. On Monday, we deployed and released five elemental media services to the uh, AWS Management Console. So those consisted of AWS Elemental Media Convert, which is a file-based uh, transcoding service. It's, uh, it's got the expertise of elemental encoding with the uh, uh, AWS cloud uh, deployment. There's also AWS Elemental Media Live, which does live uh, stream uh, transcoding. AWS Elemental Media Package, which does the packaging of those live streams for distribution. Uh, and then two others, which are AWS Elemental Media Store, which is a, a, an origination and storage service, and Media Tailor, which is a personalization and monetization service, which can be used for server-side ad insertion. Today, I'm going to focus on Media Live and Media Package to show how easy they are to use and how quick they are to set up and get a live stream working with kind of broadcast grade uh, codex uh, and quality, but with the ease of an AWS service uh, and fully kind of pay as you go and simple to use. So, to start with, when you log into the console, you've got AWS Media Live console page. You see a list of uh, inputs that you can create. Uh, the creation of an input is pretty straightforward. Uh, you head to create, and you've got the options of uh, picking what the ingest format is. So there's RTMP, RTP, or HLS. That can be your input source. Uh, and then you can protect that input by adding a security group. So for most of these, you've got existing security groups that which created, which are open to all IPs. But uh, for security, you should normally keep that locked down to just the inputs you want to use. Uh, what we've got already set up uh, and then once you've got that input set up, you create the channel that you want to send that input to. And that channel parameters that you include will be then the encode parameters for, uh, for the live stream to get encoded into. So normally that includes uh, what we call an adaptive bitrate set. So it's, uh, in this example, we've got a 1080p HD stream, a 720 HD stream, and then two lower bit rates, which are a 480 and a 240. So that gives the corresponding uh, sorry, resolutions and quality and equally the, uh, the bit rate. So as the resolution gets smaller, the bit rates get smaller. So it works on a, if you're network congested, you've got an ABR set. You don't buffer, you just drop to the lower quality of video. So once that's created, you then, <coughs> you've got the options to change the different bit rates for all the different parameters. Uh, sorry, here we are. Uh, the different bit rates uh, and the uh, kind of parameters around each of those output groups, as well as the destination that you want to send that content to, uh, which appears here. Uh, and where we're sending that content in this example, uh, I've got the lives showing here, uh, is to the kind of the partner service, which is AWS Elemental Media Package. So. The Media Live encodes it a single time into the different bit rates. And what Media Package will then do is take that encoded stream and prepare it for delivery to the end devices. So I'll switch over to that. So what we've got here is a setup showing the live stream outputs from Media Live arriving into the Media Package service. Uh, I'll quickly go over how easy it is to set up a new channel. Normally, all you need is create. You ask for a channel ID, a description, 
and the format that the ingest is going to come in on. And what the create will do is give you the input URL. That's what gets placed in the media live as the output destination. Then once that live channel is created, uh, so the one that we've got existing here, oops, sorry, this one, the ones that we've got existing here has got a dash output. So the HLS output from the live is being packaged as a dash output. And there's a live metrics on the live channel showing that the ingest is coming in. At the moment, there's no one watching, so there's no egress output. Uh, and a live preview of the MPD, which is the manifest file for the dash format, which you can uh, explode out and look at all the details of the live manifest and get the details of. What you can also do is get the, the, the view, a live preview of the stream coming in. So that's playing what the, the source video coming into the media live, the media live sending to the package, and that is being played back as a dash stream in the test player within the console here. And the, the flexibility of that solution now means that because we don't have to change the encoder, the encoder is running without actually changing anything upstream, I can add another output for that. So if I want to add, oops. New endpoint. I'll do HLS. Uh, we've got the options when you're creating the output for a media package to put in a start over Windows. So that gives you an archive within the live stream that enables things like live rewind, or if the player can jump to a specific time code, it can also mean you can restart the program that's being run. Media package will offer up to 72 hours of archive as part of the, the, the package price. You can also do time delay channels. So without putting a rewind window in, they'll by default maybe start uh, if, there, if there's a channel that on the East Coast and on the West Coast, you can have a channel that starts three hours behind by default, but without having to create a different encoder for that. Here I'll keep the default settings with the segment duration. This is also where you can add encryption. So if the, uh, linking to a, uh, a DRM key provider, uh, you can be adding encryption at this stage and whitelisting IPs for the origination. But I'm going to keep all the defaults in and just save the HLS output And now added to the dash on the dashboard, we've got a HLS output for the same stream. If I click the HLS link, instead of an MPD preview, we can see an MP3U8 preview with the different M3U8 indexes inside. So these are the different bit rates, and then the video chunks that are being populated in there. And as we refresh, those will keep on refreshing back and give you the new bit rates. Similarly, we can preview the live stream the same way that we could for the dash, but built into the console is also a QR code, which if I point, or you can point your camera to, that should help. Conference Wi-Fi notwithstanding. The same stream. Have you got that? Playing back? So the same stream on the screen will play direct HLS. So this is a good way to confidence test because it's playing straight from the packager. What, for distribution, it would be attached to a CDN, and that M3U8 would be put on the website. I'll stop play. And now there's a few people watching. We should be, if anyone was then the egress bandwidth goes up on the CloudWatch metrics at the bottom as well. So there's immediate show that there's someone watching that stream. So that sums up. It's that easy for going from creating an input in Media Live, 
sending that from potentially anything from a, a, a broadcast live app or an OBS app on the computer or a professional grade uh, encoder on premise, sending that content into Media Live, configuring what the encode parameters are in Media Live to get that source content encoded into the required bit rates, sending those required bit rates over to Media Package. Media Package will take those <clears throat> the single set of encoded bit rates and be able to produce multiple different renditions for different devices. In this case, we've got a dash which would work well for TV devices and Android devices and HLS that would work perfectly on iOS devices and other TV devices. The options here is you, what you can also do is create a new potential, a new HLS set with all the high bit rates removed because it's customized for cellular connections on mobile or all the lower bit rates removed. So there's lots of freedom here to continue to add endpoints. Uh, and add DRM, as I said, to those if you will need a protected output. So from a single source, you've got lots of different outputs. And all the alerts and metrics, so these are being fed into CloudWatch. So if uh, the same way that you've got the, the metrics here for confidence, you can trigger alerts off if you want to register that the egress bandwidth has gone down to trigger an alert that something's wrong with the channel, or uh, if the egress bandwidth is going down because you know that no one's watching, there may be something wrong with a client downstream. Both services are also designed to be uh, highly available within a region. So setting up the channel, as you saw, I didn't have to configure any kind of highly av high availability or resilience. Everything will be, have had multiple encode resources for Media Live distributed across different AZs, and multiple ingest and egress resources configured in multiple AZs for the media package. So it's designed by default to be highly available within a region. So that was the demo within a few minutes creating a live stream and having it played on a device that quick. Thank you. Thank you, Kieran.